This project is sponsored by the Wicked Edge Sharpening System. Get your knives razor sharp with the Wicked Edge. Learn more about the Wicked Edge Sharpening System at the link in the description below. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the shop. This is a Jimmy Duresta knife. They are available on his website. I don't know how many are available, so you might want to head over there sooner versus later, and I'll have a link in the description below. I'm planning to make the handle out of rosewood and epoxy. I don't work with epoxy all that often, so hopefully this works out. And if I have success, I'll probably make something else, maybe a knife block. So let's go ahead and get to it. The plan is to use a quarter inch straight bit in the router, along with a bushing, and then I'll make a guide to create a vessel about four inches by seven eighths of an inch by about a half of an inch deep. Before I go any further, I'm using a little painter's tape to protect the blade and also keep myself from getting cut while I handle the knife. I'm making the router guide out of half inch plywood and my first rip is at three inches. Using the same piece of half inch plywood, I'll make the next rip at an inch and a sixteenth. I'm using the thinner rip, the one at an inch and sixteenth, and cross cutting it into two pieces that measure seven inches long. I'll attach the inch and a sixteenth piece to the three inch piece, keeping the pieces flush at the back with inch and a half nails in the nail gun. Notice I'm holding the gun like this and not like this. You're more likely to get blowouts on thin pieces if you hold the gun like this because the nail will come out of the gun and bend this way or this way. Now I'll measure four and a sixteenth from the piece that I just attached and attach the next piece at that mark. I'll find and mark the center, which is a half of an inch, and then I'll make another mark a little heavier than a sixteenth of an inch above that, and that's going to be the depth that I set the router bit to. To avoid tear out or chipping, I'm taking just a little bit off with each pass until I get to the final depth of just a little bit heavier than 3 eighths of an inch. Join myself, Jimmy DeResta, the Samurai Carpenter, John Heise, Frank Howarth, and Neil Pask for the Maker's Mob Black Friday Cyber Monday sale. Now with over 80 plus woodworking projects and woodworking plans, you can learn from some of YouTube's top makers. Click on the link in the description below to get in on the Maker's Mob's biggest sale of the year. This sale ends on Monday, so be sure to click on the link in the description and check it out today. I'm making the first cross cut a little heavier than an eighth of an inch from the edge of the mortise. Pulling from the opposite side of the mortise, I'll make a mark at an inch and three eighths, and that's the next cut. I've set the fence of the table saw at an inch and a quarter, and I'm using the gripper to make this cut. Shit. 
When I was making this cut, the gripper lost grip of this piece because there was no material here for it to grip onto. Luckily, it's not a problem because I'll be shaping the handle anyway. But if you're going to make this cut, put that side down and you'll be fine. I've set the fence at 7 16 of an inch and I've raised the blade to one inch. Again, I'm going to use the gripper and make the first cut. I've readjusted the fence this way about a 64th of an inch. I'll make another pass and then test the fit. I've already tested it, so I know I have a nice snug fit. You wanna be careful with this piece right here. That is very fragile. It'll be strong once the epoxy is poured in. The one thing I need to do is nibble away this area right here because of the bend in the knife. And I'm going to carefully do that with the table saw. I've raised the blade up to two inches. I've got a piece of painter's tape that is hanging down on the front of the block, a little less than a 16th of an inch. And I'm just going to cut up to that painter's tape and then back it off. I've readjusted the fence a little bit and now I'll make the second cut. I actually cut into the tape a little bit there, almost all the way to the edge, but that's all right. And you can see that the knife fits better into the handle now. It's much tighter and I can get the whole D. I almost have equal spacing with the A and the D. A little bit more space on the A, but I can live with that. To fill this part right here, I'll make a spline out of white oak. Because the spline needs to be thinner than this part that I'm using to push the material through the saw, I'll make the cut in two passes. First, ripping this part, then flipping the piece over and making the second pass. I'm almost ready for the epoxy and this is the plan. I'll put a little epoxy on the spline, put the spline in place, try to seal any gaps with hot glue, use this piece of maple here and glue that in place, and then pour the epoxy into the vessel. I'm using West System Epoxy. This is a five to one ratio. I've got five ounces of the resin in the cup here and I'll pour the hardener in until I reach six ounces. And that's the right measurement. To shape the handle of the knife, I've clamped my belt sander to the workbench. And I'm gonna start out with 50 grit paper for the heavy lifting. And I'll switch over to 80 grit paper once I start to like the shape. I've got this gap here, which may have been caused by too much heat with the torch. So I'm going to try to fill that up and see how it goes. I've allowed the epoxy to set up overnight. 
I do have a little bit of a low spot right here. There's 80 grit sandpaper on the belt sander. I'll do a little bit more shaping and see how it looks. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I really like the rosewood and white oak combination. The epoxy is pretty good. I do have a few air bubbles, but I think the method of creating a vessel with the router, if you've got more experience with epoxy, you probably get better results than I have. But again, this is my first time pouring epoxy, so all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Of course, the knife or the blade is really cool, and if you wanna get one of these, just go over to Jimmy's website. I'll have a link in the description below. I never did get to the cutting board chopping block, cutting board knife block. So I will probably have that up sometime in the near future. And a big thank you to the Wicked Edge sharpening system. If you like sharp knives, you're going to like the Wicked Edge sharpening system. It does get your knives razor sharp. So definitely be careful. That's all for now. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.